Previously on Gonkulus. I still have to play them and make a research. That's too much. Star Fox is a good game. What the hell is Star Fox? Okay, I think I'm good now, I'm now taking my meds and I should recover soon, but man, it's not gonna be the same. The doctors came to the conclusion that in result of playing Star Fox, I suffered a stroke and a temporarily amnesia, whatever that means. Fortunately, it's not that bad, but it will take a while for me to go back to the Star Fox series. But for now, let's go back to another 3D polygonal Nintendo game, and that game is Mario Kart 64. If you ask me, Mario Kart 64 is no doubt the most memorable and nostalgic Mario Kart for me. It was my first Mario Kart, of course I'm nostalgic for it. I don't have an N64, I never had one, so I played Mario Kart 64 on an emulator. You saw everyone play Mario Kart Wii or Mario Kart 7 if you had a 3DS, but me, I didn't have a Wii or a 3DS. I was more on the PlayStation side of things. Besides that, the only Nintendo system I had was the GBA, but I never got Super Circuit. To this day, I never played Super Circuit. I'll save it up for next time. The backstory for this game is more interesting than Super Mario Kart actually. After Super, Nintendo started developing a Mario Kart game for the Virtual Boy. Originally, we were going to get a Mario Kart for the Virtual Boy before Mario Kart 64. The codename for the game was VB Mario Kart, and apparently it was supposed to be a game very similar to Super Mario Kart, with the rotoscopic animations and the playing courses. However, we don't have much information about VB Mario Kart. It was cancelled around 1995 during the Virtual Boy's production. Fan projects keep the idea alive, but it was for the best that it was cancelled. I don't want to buy a Virtual Boy for a stupid entry on the Mario Kart franchise. Moving over to actual 3D consoles, Nintendo started production on a new Mario Kart for the Nintendo Ultra 64, and that game was Super Mario Kart R. R actually means rendered, I thought it meant racing. Wait, does this mean that the full name of Sonic R is Sonic Rendered? We'll never know. The game was first unveiled at Shoshinkai Software Exhibition 1995. This was the show that unveiled the Ultra 64, so it's awesome that Super Mario Kart R was always there in the beginning of the 64's life, even if the game only released after the launch of the console. This beta build has many differences compared to the final build. Originally there was going to be a Magic Koopa playable instead of Donkey Kong, but it was scrapped and the Magic Koopa nor Gamek never made their debut on the Mario Kart franchise. That's if you don't count the mobile game Mario Kart Tour, but every Mario Kart character is there, so who cares. Here we have a different logo and title screen, here you can see that Wario's model is a little whack. The feather item from Super Mario Kart was on this build, but it was removed and only returned on Mario Kart 8 Deluxe's battle mode. I am not going full detail on the beta build and all the good content, but it's interesting and I recommend taking a look at all the differences. Many people that have played Mario Kart 64 say that the game aged poorly. No shit, it uses 3D sprites like Donkey Kong Country on a 64-bit console. I couldn't agree more, in fact it aged poorly, but it doesn't mean that it's bad. We got a way of getting a Virtual Boy Mario Kart for fuck's sake. This is our title screen. It's just okay, this title screen shares similarities with the American and European box arts, but I prefer the box art more, it makes me want to ride like crazy with Bowser on Wario Stadium. I'll be playing 150cc like always, and here's my biggest complaint for Mario Kart 64. Everything is unlocked right off the get-go. I love unlockables in Mario Kart and video games in general, but this is just upsetting. Not even the special cup is unlockable, and that is a tradition on the Mario Kart series in Super. 64 really need to exist and do this, huh? You just had to blow it up, you, and your pride and your ego. You can say that it's practical, if you're playing the game with friends, you don't need to do anything. But come on, I only felt happiness once in a lifetime, and that was when I unlocked all characters in Smash Ultimate. 
Let's pick a character. In Mario Kart 64, I only pick Wario or Donkey Kong, it's one or the other. I never was a Peach player, I only play as Bowser on the later games, Luigi was my main in Super, but Wario needed to exist, I hate Toad, Yoshi is my last resort to be honest, it's my third pick, and no one picks Mario, I've never seen a human being playing as Mario on a Mario Kart game. The controls in Mario Kart 64 are a far improvement to Super Mario Kart. Now we have an actual drift that actually works and it's useful for the first time. Let's go through each cup and talk about the courses. The most important thing of Mario Kart is the courses. And this game has many good courses, Nintendo beats to death and squeezes as many 64 courses on modern Mario Kart. Almost every 64 course was remade, except Wario Stadium and I don't get why. Let's start with the Mushroom Cup. The first course is Luigi Raceway. I think it's a good starting course, a bit random for a Luigi course. Mumu Farm is definitely the worst course in Mario Kart 64. Heck, it just may be the worst Mario Kart track of all time next to Yoshi Falls from DS. It's just a weird circle with multi modes. that's it, I never liked this track. Koopa Troopa Beach is ok, many people love this one to death but not me. Calamari Desert is amazing, I love that you can enter the tunnel and get hit by a train. I don't know why the music sounds like it could fit on a 2D Sonic game. I'm serious, it sounds more like sonic ish than mario Wish. I like the fact that if you place force or lower, your character basically commits suicide. I don't know why, I just think it's funny. The Flower Cup begins with Toad's Turnpike, my third favorite track of this game. I played this track to death when I was a kid. This track is chaotic with the different vehicles passing through. Frappe Snow and is a very cozy and jolly track, courses like this are always fantastic. I've seen Choco Mountain on various Mario Kart games at the point that I'm sick of saying it. The original is good. I don't get why many people like Mario Raceway. It's an ok track, I think it has a fun design, but god. People love this one. It's odd when the cup with the equivalent of a Mario circuit, I think Toad's Turnpike would have made a good job of ending the cup, to be honest. We're out through the courses and if you didn't notice yet, I'm not impressed. But the Star Cup has many good tracks. Wario Stadium, my god, how I love this track, I just fucking love it. I want to see this course on the new Mario Kart because you can do a lot of tricks on the random bumps of mud around the track. Sherbet Land, unfortunately, is the black sheep of the Star Cup, I hate it. I think the Double Dash version is better, even if many people don't like it very much. But hey, we have the penguins from Super Mario 64. Royal Raceway is my favorite raceway course, that big jump across the river, it, it's just awesome. And of course, we can go to Peach's Castle, until late came and removed that function unfortunately. Bowser's Castle from Mario Kart 64 is one of my favorites. I don't know how they made it that good. The jump from Bowser's Castle 1, 2 and 3 to this is massive. It's really amazing how they made it on the 64. The only weird thing about it is that this track is on the Star Cup. Usually Bowser's Castles are in the Special Cup, they're always the third track, but here it's on the Star Cup and I don't blame them. This thing only started happening on Super Circuit, so it took a while. Now we're on the final cup. And I'm wasting a lot of time in this, so let's get this over with. DK's Jungle Parkway is terrible, the big jump is funny, Yoshi Valley is on my top 5 favorite Mario Kart tracks, I love the different routes and Mario Kart 8 made a good adaptation of the track to the Wii on Switch, Banshee Bordog is the saddest course of the game, the big fish is awesome, Rainbow Road is visually astonishing, but it's too long and it can last to 6 minutes. The music is the pinnacle of Mario Kart 64. I need to get this out to the world, Banshee Bordog is the most frustrating point of this game. How did this get remade for DS instead of Wario Stadium? Every time I play this track I always fall, the track is very narrow, how the fuck did Nintendo come up with this? I need to calm down. This is not me. But Benji Bordock is the lowest point of this game next to Moon Farms and the Unlockables. Speaking of which... If you complete each cup with a gold trophy on each engine, you get an alternate title screen that shows all your favorite characters in Calamari Desert. For some reason. This is the only thing unlockable and I'm really pissed about it. We need to talk about the items in this game, because compared to Super, there is a lot of good items that would later become mainstays in the next games. We have the red shell, the banana peel, the lightning, the green shell, the star and the blue items returned from Super Mario Kart. And now we have new items such as the banana bunch, the triple mushroom, the golden mushroom, the triple green and red shells, the fake item box and the blue shell. There is no Mario Kart without the blue shell. The lightning item is the best item in the whole series, there is no item like it. It's a shame that you can only get it if you are really far behind. 
but not for Mario Kart 64. Yeah, it happened many times that I got a golden mushroom or a lightning item at first place. That's not balanced at all. It's a good way to fuck the already fucked. The campaign of Mario Kart 64 is good, but what if you want to play battle mode? Here's a mistake that I made on my Super Mario Kart review. I said that battle mode was always shit until 8 deluxe. God how I'm wrong. That's probably the worst take I've made ever. The battle mode in Mario Kart 64 is good. You can turn into a bomb when you die, you can't wait for his playable debut in the next Mario Kart. It's fun in multiplayer, and that goes for the rest of the game. Multiplayer is the bread and butter of Mario Kart, and 64 nails it. This game also has time trials. Now here's the thing. Why do I and many people think that the game aged poorly? Well... Like I mentioned earlier, the characters are 2D sprites instead of 3D models. That's rough for a game like this from the 5th generation of consoles. The tracks are very plain and a bit basic, it was a step to the right direction from Super, but now we have so many tracks that are unique and have something to it, like Waluigi Pinball from Mario Kart DS and Mako Woohoo from Mario Kart 7. The game is slow and when I say slow I mean it. Take for example Rainbow Road, this track can take 3 minutes to complete a lap. I sometimes give up on the first lap to be honest. Mario Kart 8 made a remake of this track which removed 2 laps and it takes more than half of that. If you have the skill it can take seconds in 200cc. The thing about N64 Rainbow Road is that you can't fall, it's impossible. Oh what the shit? But you know what, I fucking love this game. Nostalgia aside, Mario Kart 64 is fun to this day. It might not have the most content of any Mario Kart, but I enjoy its sheer simplicity, it's kinda charming. The version I enjoy playing the most is Mario Kart 64 HD. This fan project basically improves the quality of the tracks, the characters, the music and anything from this game, and it's in full screen. gotta love that. If this is your first time, or if you're planning on revisiting this classic car racer, I recommend playing Mario Kart 64 HD, and it still continues to get updates as of August 2022. And that was my journey of revisiting one of my favorite N64 games, Mario Kart 64. I was going to release some more of this episode today, but I guess that thing will stay in the limbo. Now that I think of it, you probably don't want to see it. So until then, stay safe, play some Astral Chain, we'll get there soon, and ciao.